All right, now we have pretty much put the thing together. I feel good about all the adjustments we made and the sealing of it. I have the side cover torqued in. The, the, the worm gear adjustment bolt is out. So we're going to start now to adjust the final adjustment, the second adjustment, using the little spring gauge. First thing we do is we very carefully, with one finger, we turn the steering wheel around and find the end of its travel. And we don't want to jam it in there. We want to go very lightly and find the end of its travel. There it is right there. What you don't want to do is jam that in because those parts will have tremendous forces against them when you put a 17-inch steering wheel out here and you, and, you, and you handle it. So use care so that that doesn't happen. So we're starting here. We're going to turn it four times. There's one. There's two. There's three. And there's four. And how much more? A half. So we're going to go back two and a quarter to find the center of its of its of the travel. So from here we go one, two, and a quarter. Then we take the steering wheel off and we place the steering wheel on in the position that it'll be in when you're driving the car straight down the road, which is this position. One spoke straight down toward the floor and the two turn signal canceling pins on your left, closest to the driver's door. So now that we've found the center of the motion of the shaft, we place the steering wheel on in the straight ahead position like you're driving down the road. These two turn signal canceling pins are vertically oriented right next to the driver's door panel. There it is. This is the center. Now in, it's in this position as you're driving straight that you want to uh, uh, test and adjust the final um, resistance to turning point, the center point of the, worm, of the hourglass worm gear. So we're going to put our adjustment nut on there. This is the 7 16 fine thread nut with a 5 8 wrench size. We use a screwdriver to uh, do the adjustment and we will uh, tighten this slightly. That is, we're running the, the, the sector roller up close to the worm gear. The sector roller will not pass under the worm gear. It only goes up and bumps into it. It's the amount of bumping into it that, that causes this adjustment. How close you force the roller to the moving worm gear, the closer you force it there, the harder the adjustment. And that's the adjustment we're going to make. So we give it a little bit of an adjustment and we, and we go out here and we take our, our scale that's now going to measure around 24 ounces and we pull it and see if we're, we're close to 24 ounces. And I'm not at 24 ounces, I'm still uh, way below it. So I'm going to adjust a little further toward the worm gear. And once again, the two turn signal canceling pins are on the left. I put a little piece of masking tape here in the center just to kind of indicate the center of it for me. And I want to measure it now and see if we're, if we're, if we're coming up tight. There's resistance to turning right there. It's a little off-center. It's off-center. And if it's off-center on both sides of center, which it is, it's, off, it's a little bit heavy on both sides of center. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to leave it right there. Since we have um, resistance to turning a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right of center, we know that we're on the high point of the, of the worm gear. So this is the place where we're going to set uh, the tension. And we're close to it right now within the specifications that they give. So we're going to um, tighten the 5 8 wrench size uh, uh, nut holding the screw with a screwdriver. And we go back and check it one more time to see how it is.
and it's fun. So now one more thing you want to do, the new shaft does not come with the hash mark up at the top where the steering wheel goes on like the old original shafts did. So what I do is I take a cold chisel and I just make a hash mark like the hands of a clock up from the middle of the circle of that shaft where the nut goes on I make a hash mark up to 12 o'clock so that later whoever takes on and off the steering wheel will have a witness mark to be able to put the steering wheel on straight with the turn signal canceling pins here closest to the left door that way the turn signal will cancel properly when you come out of a turn so we have it all finished I usually squirt a few squirts of 90 weight in here just for fun and put the cap in. I also include a six piece um, uh, instruction sheet which is like a little follow up instruction sheet which reminds the installer to check things out like the drag link and the wheel bearing adjustment and um, the tie rod ends and the third arm bearing and a few things like that that may be the cause of wander in one of these cars that will also confound the fact that the steering gearbox is in good condition but the car still may have some wander. As an example, the third, the third arm in the middle of the front frame cross member, that big idler arm, if you grab that arm and you, and you move it up and down, you want to have zero play there. That arm should swing but not move even the tiniest bit up and down. If you have any up and down movement in that third arm, you're going to have tremendous wander. Also the drag link that long funny looking rod uh, with um, springs and such in each end of it that needs to be put together properly and lubricated properly and adjusted properly or you will have play there. When this thing is all together the way the Corvette was designed to be and if you stand on the outside of the driver's door and you reach in through the open window and grab the steering wheel and you look down at the front left tire and you wiggle the steering wheel ever so slightly you will see movement in the tire ever so slightly that's how perfect it was from the standpoint of having no play there's zero play from the steering wheel to the rubber on the road when the whole Corvette is put together the way the factory intended for it to be if your cars put together that way you will enjoy driving it it'll run like a modern car down the highway with no trouble whatsoever if there's any play in that steering wheel when it's in the straight ahead position then there's something loose in there somewhere that's causing what we call what I call wander I want to thank my friend Benton Russell for holding the camera for me today he's been here for hours doing this uh, I hope you've enjoyed this short video my website is rarecorvettes.com my email address is joe at rarecorvettes.com you can send me email should you have any questions or comments about the video. Thank you so much.